Hello Andy, this is Colin. I want to be able to get in tonight. I'm sweating like a pig. I'm sweating like a pig. Still David, still one up gaming, and we're still at the show for gaming at one up gaming episode 375. I had a head moment there where I completely forgot what I was doing. Anyway, this is the part of the show where we go through the games played this week. So the first two, I'm just going to say great games. The first one is FC24, still playing the career mode, still playing as myself, still trying to get my stats up, and I love that. It's like the RPG kind of stat building, stat grinding that I love. And I think I'm up to a 72 now, I think I was. Last time I was on here, I think I was a 69 or a 70. Um, still playing right back. I've discovered that in the game, you seem to get more points if you do more assists and score goals. So you forget about the defensive duties and just get in there. Play more as a winger and play more as passing into the centre and getting shots on, that kind of thing. Pretty cool. I do love the game. The next one is Forza Motorsport. And again, I love this game. I think the feeling of the cars are great. I think the noise, the emotion of your racing is really good. Graphics are good, but I think it's more of the lines of it looks amazing when you do side by side comparisons with Forza 7 and then this Forza one. It looks so much better, it looks so much cleaner, so much neater, so much more detail. The mist effects, the smoke effects, all that kind of stuff look amazing. But when you're playing the game and you don't have the reference of the older one to look at, then you think it doesn't look that good. It's not as sharp as it should be, it shouldn't be. Do you know what I mean? It just, your brain fills in all the defects of the older ones and you think that it looked better than what it actually did. This one has more depth, more feel, more lived in kind of environments. But the racing is where it's at and I still enjoy the game, I still enjoy playing the game. So we'll have a few more weeks, month of this game and see how we go. So the first proper game this week was F1 Manager 23. Now this is a game where I wish that I could, on the option screen, just say buy the best um, person to do the research for the development of the car, buy the best marketing person to get more money into the team. I just want to be more along the lines of the um, race engineer rather, so I do the pit stops, do the pit calls, do the tyre changes, that kind of thing, do the strategies there. All the rest of it, yes, is amazing, it's really good, it's really deep and involving, but I kind of get lost in all that detail in there and it's just too much for my little brain to cope. But if you enjoy Formula 1, if you enjoy management games, it's probably one of the best management games on the Xbox, or on consoles, I'd say. Because um, it is a really deep, involving game, and I think it is a really good game, and I, I do enjoy it. When you're in the game, like in the racing part of the game, you can select like in-car view or the in-helmet view, and it almost looks real. It looks absolutely stunning. And I think it's about 35, 40 quid, so it's not full price. But it's still a good game, and I really recommend that. It's really good. Next game is a game that I'd never even heard of, but I got asked to review it, so I got the code. It is Abris Build to Destroy. Now, this is a mixture of like Angry Birds, it's a mixture of the. I can't think of the games where you actually shoot things in the 3D space at the castle. To destroy it, it's all the pixels and particles and bricks all flying everywhere. It looked amazing. This is similar to those sort of games, but it looks futuristic, all neon, all dark, looks gorgeous. And then you have to build structures next to the building, and then you have to set it so that structure you build falls onto the building and hits the detonation point and then it destroys the other building and it's very hard it's very complicated to work out what you're doing but 
ever so satisfying how when things explode and the particle effects are just flying all over the screen. It looks absolutely stunning. It is a, a great little game and I really, really enjoy that. I was shocked. I was amazed how good this game was. So Abris Build to Destroy is a great game and hopefully you've seen this trailer in the background and you think, wow, that looks stunning. I thought so too. Next up, we have Jolly Put Mini Golf and Arcade. And at first, I just assumed it was like a like a mini golf game. I've seen all these like for thousands and thousands of times, like on the old Mega Drive, on the Amiga. You know, all these old games where it's just a simple three D uh, little mini golf thing, and you just put and try and get the ball in the hole. But this is so much more you go into the game and you have a small rectangle of space and you put your entrance you put your food stands your drink stands entertainment and then you build your own mini golf courses oh i've got hiccups now and you also get the guests the patrons people to come in and they play the get golf games and buy the food and stuff and leave and you get cleaners get engineers and all that kind of stuff so it's like a sim city theme park management sort of game and it's great and you can also go over the little tiny mini golf course click on enter and then it goes into a full 3d game world where you can play that little 3d like golf game and that part of it is a little bit janky but the overalls of this game is really good i love this sort of game it's not too complicated it's just enough to get you in and keep you going and i was really impressed with this game i thought it was really nice really good little game so that's like four games in a row that's absolutely amazing five games in a row it's amazing it's great and then we have to follow up with another good game, and that is Starry Night. Now this one was a little bit janky in the character movement, the feeling of the game, the stilted presentation, but the art style, the graphics, everything about that is so on point. It looks like a Van Gogh, Van Gogh, Van Gogh, painting it looks stunning absolutely bloody amazing i loved the art style of this game it's kind of like a one-on-one -on -one fighting game kind of beat em up sort of scrolling beat em up mix not quite as fast and fluid as you want for a fighting game it's a little bit more janky but the graphics make up so much of this game and it makes you think bloody hell this developer who made this had an idea and he followed through and it looks bloody good i love this sort of game i think it was really good so starry night buy it on steam i think it's cheap as chips it's a really good little game then we have mega knockdown now this one again is very strange very strange and it is the one-on-one um, -on -one fighting game but it's like a turn-based fighting game so imagine you have two characters on screen you press forward punch and then it'll go forward punch while that guy has to either do defend or attack and if he does forward and kick because the kick's longer it'll, it'll hit your punch and you can do down and punch and do an uppercut and it'll affect two blocks if you do like a forward kick, it'll affect four blocks. So the more blocks it does, the more area of effect it has. And it, it was weird, really strange. But again, another really good idea. And I really got into it. Really fun game. Once you work out the aesthetics of how you play the game, it is really fun. And I really, really enjoyed this game. It's a good one. Most of these are on Steam. I've, as I say, I've finally got my little cupboard sorted-ish and I can play some of these games in my cupboard. So, 
mega knockdown. Great game. Next up, Monster Master. So this isn't Monster Masters, it's Monster Master. And it's very similar to a lot of games that come and go. It's a first person sort of shooter, but hard sort of based game where you're a person and like zombies or monsters are attacking you wave after wave. And I guess it's like a four player or so game. I haven't connected the internet, I just played singly. And it is just like the Call of Duty sort of like the hard modes in that, like the zombies mode, things like that. It looked nice, very cartoonified, very. Um, yeah, it just looked very good. A Fortnite esque sort of like the look of it. Um, it played more of a first person shooter, more standardized. It was fast, fluid, smooth. It was looked nice, but. I think that unfortunately these sort of games, unless they have a big push for marketing and everything, then you will get it, you will play it, you'll play it with a few friends, but after that it'll slowly die off and there'll be no one playing the game. So unfortunately I can't recommend Monster Master because of that, but the game is good and I think that if it was a bigger developer making it or a bigger marketing push, it could have been so much more. But the game itself is good. I think it's just the player base, the fan base just isn't there for this sort of game on this game, which is a shame. And I guess we have to end with probably the worst game I played this week. It's still not a bad game, but it's just not what I would play. Do you know the Super Mario Run game where you constantly are moving forward? Imagine that, but a lot faster and a lot more Twitch based. It's called um, Step by Step. It's a 2D platform game on PC and your character is always moving. As you know, it's, it can only move one way and you can slow him down, go faster, double jump, all that kind of stuff. And if you hit a wall or hit an enemy or something, your man automatically rotates around and starts going the other way. And some of the jumps are so pixel perfect timed or it's momentum based physics and all that kind of stuff. I guess if you're into this really hard 2D platform style game, you will get a lot out of this. Me, I just felt I'd rather have full control and play the game as I want to play it, rather than just... Because if you make a mistake, if you're jumping over six floating blocks and fall down, you have to then hit the wall, come all the way back, jump up, hit a wall, turn around, and then try and jump on the blocks again. And it's just trial and error, and it's just so hard to get right. Which is a shame, because it seemed a good little game. But I would rather play a full, controllable 2D platformer with these controls, because the, the controls were really good. It was just the fact that the guy, you can't really turn around and control him that well. Last thing that I want to talk about is a movie. And I actually managed to watch the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Now... I think the reason why I wanted to watch this is because it was made by the same people who did Megan, the android doll horror movie, which was bloody good. I, I really thought it was funny and, and a really good little movie. And this one, started watching it, started getting into it. I didn't realise there was such a background law for the games. I've always felt that the games weren't the best. I just didn't like the static screens and the that kind of thing. I thought that style of game died off in the Mega CD era. But each to their own. Um, the movie itself was great. It was stupid. It was funny. It had a couple of little jump scares. You could tell it was made more for a PG-13 crowd. Didn't show a lot of the gore. Didn't show a lot of the violence. But... It was a good movie and I enjoyed watching it. And I will have to say, special mention, there's like, the main guy has a young little sister in the movie and she is adorable in this. <laughs> She's absolutely adorable. There's a little bit in the movie where she runs and she runs like with a little hunch in her arms down in front of her and it just looks so funny. But it's a good movie, great characters, great little set pieces. 
I really enjoyed it. And Five Nights at Freddy's, I might give some of the games a go once they make into the, the full 3D kind of field. And please leave comments below if they have made a full 3D controllable Five Nights at Freddy's game that's not a VR game. Because I've seen there was a VR game that looked kind of like 3D. But you know what I mean. Leave comments, let me know. So, thank you for watching. Um, as I say, we normally have videos every day of the week. So we have a UK Top 40s video game chat on a Monday. We have a Booster Ride video on a Tuesday. We have a Witch's Best on a Wednesday. We have a Retro Thursday video. We have the podcast on a Friday. We have the games played this week on a Saturday. And we have the gaming and entertainment news every Sunday. So that's what we do. Me, David. One Up Gaming episode 375 of the One Up Gaming podcast. We'll have a quick break and we'll be back to see this week's news, I guess. So back in a few.